Wouter Warming ended up here because of love. He told me. Well, Wouter, welcome. Good to have you here. Thank you. Uh, now, you run Studio Ludens at home, and you're a visiting research fellow at the RMIT's Exertion Games Lab. He's sitting in front of me, white helmet, it's got, it's a little bit thicker perhaps than your average bike helmet, mm -hmm. it's flashing a red light at the back, and just do the indicators on both sides for me. So he tilts his head and it indicates one side, tilts his head and it indicates the other side. I want one. <laughs> uh, why did you come up with this? Um, well, we started with the question of why does a helmet only basically serve the function of safety? Why, why is it only protecting us when we, um, when we are in a crash? Why can't it do something for us during the rest of the time that we wear it? And so we, you know, being a lab that tries to combine technology and games and sports, we thought, well, what if we augment it and we put um, a display on it, um, which uh, we turned into 104 LEDs that are now positioned on the helmet. And um, so we said, okay, we have lights on them. What kind of things can we do with them? Uh, what kind of people wear helmets? So you have cyclists, you have skateboarders, there's um, people at construction sites. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think for cycling, for instance, it could be great for safety or for, uh, as, 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 I, as I'm showing now, for, uh, for indicating. Um, maybe for skateboarders, it could be a form of expressing themselves. So. How big is the battery pack? Oh, the battery pack is reasonably small. It could be much smaller. This is just a prototype. Oh, that's a break. So it's, yep. a, it's like a large cigarette pack, really, isn't it? Yeah, basically it basically has well. six AA batteries in it. Oh, okay. Um, so it's not and, so big. And a little computer, of course. And all the lights that I can see flashing, which is fantastic, they're not going to get in the way. If I, if I fall off and my head hits the ground, they're not going to damage me in some way? Or? Well, the nice thing is that if I take off the, the cap, you can actually see that they're oh, mounted. That's on, cool. They're actually mounted on top of the helmet itself. So we didn't change the helmet itself. We just we just added things on top of it. I like that. I'm going to try and take a photo on my phone <laughs> while you're talking to me, and yep. I'll retweet that and try and stick that on the website as well. Um, why aren't you commercialising that? Surely that would just <laughs> sell by the truckload, wouldn't it? It's. I mean, um, I should explain it to people. Yeah. There's a huge bank of red lights at the back and a massive bank of yellow lights on either side. And all Walter needs to do is tilt his head either way and it lights up. How They're actually multicolored. So I can, I can do any color and any pattern. Oh, uh, yeah, I, can do, I can do small numbers on it or I can make it do certain waves. So it could be... That's what I mean. Like, it could actually be expressive as yeah. well. If I'm skateboarding and I'm doing certain moves, it could amplify those moves. <sighs> We have a little sensor built in that that helps me to detect how I'm tilting my head. Okay. But for this, you know, with the same sensor, we can actually detect whether a skateboarder is moving forward, backward, jumping. Uh, how do I? How does it know that you're stopping? Is that when your head tilts forward? Or um, at the moment, we we have it built so that I I consciously uh, turn on the red light by tilting my head slightly to the back. But what we're looking at actually today is um, if I if I can detect braking of my bike with the same sensor so that I wouldn't have to do anything. I'm basically just like a car. So the sensor I, would be able to. to feel that sudden deceleration. Indeed, yes. Wow. Can you make it change colours now? Um, no, I can't because oh, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm running a program that is particularly for the blinking and for, for oh, the braking. Okay. Yep. So if I'm um, blue sky dreaming on this, mm -hmm. say I can actually go up a vertical ramp on a skateboard, which mm -hmm. I can't always fail to do that when <laughs> I was younger, but say I could, could I program it to do a particular pattern of lights if, say, I rotate 360 or 720 degrees? For instance, yes. Um, I would actually, I, I would hope to uh, be able to make this a, um, a DIY project where people can uh, build it themselves because the elements that we're using are, um, you know, you, you, you can get them in the store if you want to, but we're putting them together and we're doing something new with it. Sure. And um, How much did that cost to make? Um, roughly. roughly, I would say about 400 bucks. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. So that's easily... Uh, uh, Patent the thing, surely. Uh, well, we've already been on the radio now, so that's, yeah. that's going to be tricky. But I, I, what I believe is that um, um, it's more about um, us building a new kind of uh, a new form of communication, where then other companies that build helmets can think, "Hmm, that's interesting." What so they're you're doing trying to provoke this. thought rather than invent, commercialize. Yes, indeed. I'm really happy to know uh, what people would want to use it for, uh, for different activities, yeah. um, and what. Yeah, what kind of opportunities other companies see in it? I mean, we as a research lab, we try to indeed provoke and ask questions. Why are you so interested in provoking thought? What's what's driving you there? Hmm. Um, I'd say that the status quo is usually pretty boring, so that's why it's good. <laughs> right. I'm but not is sure. It, is, it, is it really only just about boredom, or are you trying to push people in a particular 
I don't know, creative direction or other sort of direction? Um, that's a good point. Like, I, I, I think it's great to make people think about what techn technology could do for them. Um, and that's why I want to ask people, what would you do with such a helmet? Because I have ideas, but you have ideas as well. And it's much more about giving people the possibility to make something do that they wanted to do than forcing it upon them. Yeah. So if we make the helmet so that you can design, you can put it together yourself and maybe make your own little applications for it, just like people make applications for, for smartphones, yes. then um, it's not up to me to say what to do with it. It's, it can be a platform where people develop their own purposes for it. And I'm pretty sure that um, they'll come up with ideas that I'll never have. Mm. You know. So how might I use that on a building site? How would you imagine something like that working in a building site? Well, we've been talking about this in the lab, and um, I really like to talk to people who work on construction sites. But one of the things that we figured is that it's often very loud, and you want to hear each other. So it would be interesting if we could use it to send quick messages to one another. Like, uh, for instance, I have one program where I shake my hat, and then it goes green or not my, uh, oh, sorry, shake it red, not it green. Ah, uh, yeah, great. And so actually it, 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 um, it illustrates what I'm trying to say yes. that maybe can't get across over a long distance. You could replace those, those amazing, uh, that amazing whistle code that the blokes have with the cranes. I always see them communicating with the person mm. up in the box and they have those complicated series of whistles. Right. What do people say to you when they see you riding on the bike with that? Um... Uh, I've had some stairs. Um, right. I, I haven't been cycling too much with it yet, with it yet because I am uh, slightly afraid that I'll break it. Oh, I see. <laughs> we okay. currently have only okay. one prototype. Uh, oh, okay. We're in the process of. Um, did you of ride a with that on the way here? Yes, I did. And did yes. people smile, scream abuse? What did they do? Uh, no, they, they seem to be all right. But it's 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 now it's, it's pretty light outside, so I think people may notice it less. Have you ridden it at night? You must have tried. Uh, I have tried it on uh, on roads where there's very few cars because we just wanted to be safe to yes. start off. Um, but I think in the next couple of days, particularly because we've been having some attention from the media, is actually ride around wearing it yeah, and definitely. hoping that people actually respond and and you know tell me sure. what they think of it or what they would like to do. Can I take it home and give it a try? Uh, we only have one, so probably oh, no. Damn, I've got one final question for you, a technical sure. question. So you've got all this equipment from a shop. I'm just wondering, could you have indicators on bike grips so that if your hand was removed from the grip for, say, more than five seconds, mm. it would just light up a little indicator light beneath the seat of my bike? Is that a that would, similar sort of technology? or? Um, I guess it would be, yeah. Um, we... Um at the moment, we have one sensor built in, but you can hook up many sensors yeah. uh, to it. So we've also hooked up a, um, a microphone to it. So it would turn into a helmet that's more like an equalizer. I would play guitar and it would light up when I was playing louder and less when I'm playing softer. So <laughs> those kinds of weird ideas we're also having. It, it, it's not just about that we're trying to improve safety or sure. look for functional applications. I think it could also be a lot of fun, yeah. um, just like a lot of activities that you do with a helmet are. And, okay. You know, it's, yeah. Look, that sounds amazing. Uh, if you want to see or learn more, Exertion Games Lab, all one word, dot org. That's the uh, organisation at RMIT that Walter is a part of. He also runs Studio Ludens. That's L U D E N S. I've tweeted a few pictures of it. You can follow them, RAF774, that's the Twitter handle, and we'll see if we can get some more pictures of Walter when he leaves the studio. We'll put them on the homepage, and if you if you have a quick look at abc.net.au slash Melbourne, you may see a picture of it. Walter, thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate that. Thank you for having me. I really want one of those helmets.